stairs. Oh God, I'm gonna end up with red wine everywhere. <laughs> oh. Anyway, welcome to knit one, sip two. <laughs> or four. Yeah. Or six. <laughs> oh. Um, I'm Joe. Know. I'm oh. Jeanette, and this is mostly a knitting podcast. We do talk about what we're sipping at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and we occasionally talk about a few other things, but it's mostly knitting. Yep, mostly knitting. And um, I am you bear no, I always do that. Um, you knits, Y U K N I T S at um on Ravelry, and I am knit one sip two on Instagram. And I am Nettie Keys on Instagram and Ravelry. So yeah. Hey, so say, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. If this is the first time, welcome. Yep. We so appreciate that you're here. And if this is not your first time, we appreciate you too. And thank yes. you for subscribing and joining us. We're mm -hmm. just two friends who decided, hey, let's expand our knitting community. So it's been really fun. Yep. Yep. It's true. So, so you're wearing something new. Yes, I am. I'm wearing my super su simple summer sweater. I always have <laughs> such a hard time with this. I wore it to work today. You know, the weather's been, oh, I, well, I guess maybe we should have said we were from Monterey, California area. And um, so the weather has been gorgeous all week. And then today I went to work, which is in Pacific Grove, California, and it was freezing. And I wore this and I was cold. But this is my super summer simple sweater, super I simple summer love sweater. It. There love we go. It, love There's it. your the belly shot and the boob shot. Wait, um, now let me see the back because you were saying something about the back. Yeah. So, so first of all, I knit it in... Um, drops bell and so this is kind of how I've been I've been trying to work on using my stash but then it gets me into trouble because I had four balls of this drops bell in this color mm -hmm. and drops bell is no longer available in the United States but so I thought oh no I better I better like if I'm gonna buy more yarn to go, to make this a sweater project or to make this a bigger project I better do it now before you can't buy it anywhere, right? I don't know. Um, so it's a European yarn and it's very inexpensive. And so I found a place in Canada, Valley Valley Yarns in BC, Canada, Surrey, BC, and they had it. So I ordered it. Um, so I ordered this for skeins of the pink, the mauvey pink color. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say that the downside to this yarn is that it shows every little increase, right? Like you can see it's very um, obvious where the increases are. Well, okay. So here's my question. Is mm -hmm. that a pattern? Is there a stitch pattern there or is that? No. But it looks like a stitch pattern. Yeah, it doesn't bother me so much but I think it wouldn't show in some other yarns it wouldn't show quite as much like right. even some of the short rows yeah some of the short rows I had to really tighten up I didn't realize like I, I never worry about it normally when I do German short rows but hmm. in this yarn everything shows huh. everything what's so the it has, yarn it's uh mostly linen and cotton and some rayon Mm. Um, it's super comfortable to wear. I've really, you know, I've enjoyed wearing it. Today's the first day I've worn it. Um, let's see. It has short rows at the back neck, but the other interesting thing is it's had short rows, and let me see if I can point them out, right back here. So this pink yeah. stripe on the back is wider than the pink stripe on the front, which is kind of oh. different. Yeah, it's kind of a different way of doing short rows. I'm not sure what the point was. I don't think you need extra room there, but maybe it's just to make the back length a little longer. So the back length is a little longer and that's just because of those short rows, I think. Really? So yeah. don't you, you don't think that you could just make the back length longer by making the back length longer? I, mean, I think you could. And that's what I found interesting is in stripes, I feel like that sh those short rows really show. I mean, Nobody's going to compare your back and front. Honestly, only right. me. I'm um, going to compare my back and my front. But um, 
Yeah, I, I've never seen that before. I thought, why? So Wait, these... stand up. Yeah, let me see. Oh well, yeah. And yeah. if you're finishing with that color, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, huh? Right. Well, yeah, maybe Bobby Locatelli will, will write us and tell us why. But go ahead. What was I yeah, saying? or you could do the short rows here. You know, but yeah. it, it's interesting. But so this ribbing amount is yeah. the same amount. Huh. So it's, it's different. Um, I would say, I would definitely make it again. It was really fun to knit. It's really yeah. comfortable to wear. I don't think it's a round yoke is necessarily my most flattering look, but I don't care. This is just meant to be a comfy sweater. The thing, I knit it exactly to pattern. Um, although the gauge was weird on this pattern too. It's 17.5 stitches to four inches on a size six needle with worsted weight. So that confused me. This is a, a light worsted or a DK weight. I mean, there's no way I could have used worsted weight with a six size six no. needle and gotten that gauge. No. So I just did, I did some math. So I made a size medium to get a size small. Um, and I think it fits great. I mean, the only thing I would do is make it longer. I made it exactly per pattern, but the only thing I would do is make it longer. And the only reason I say that is because like with these jeans, I wore mm -hmm. this so it fits my muffin top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but it was a fun knit. It was a quick Real knit. Fun. Love the color on you. I know oh, out you. of your out of your box. I know I'm out of my green and blue phase right now. Love so. the color. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So what are you wearing? Oh, well, fancy you should ask. So I okay. So it's still a little damp <laughs> from me putting it. Oh wait, wait. Before we talk about what I'm wearing, what are you drinking? Oh, well. I was going to make a sex on the beach, which is the stupidest name for a drink. But anyway, that's another story. Um, the college kid so probably invented it. I poured some vodka and then I went, oh wait, we're out of orange juice. So I can't make that. So we have grapefruit juice. So I put some grapefruit juice in there and then put some fresh lime juice and then some uh, grapefruit La LaCroix, um, you know, the soda, the sparkling water. So it's, I don't know, I made oh, it up. Refreshing. It's good. Nice. It's refreshing. Well, I'm drinking. You? How funny is this? Oops. Red Ballerina Dancer Wine. Oh, Dancer Wine. So, okay, well, you dance after you drink that bottle of wine. Yeah, right. Well, <coughs> excuse me. So it started because, um, you know Nancy Whitman, um, Nancy and her husband Chris, um, they started producing wine and their model is that they're selling wine for causes. So any wine that they, like this one is dancer wine and the proceeds from this wine goes back to um, the nonprofit that does the Nutcracker. Oh, cool. So they have different wines that are associated with different causes and that money goes back to support those causes. That's awesome. So, this was the first one that they started out with. I went to the dance store today because I had to um, pick up a couple of pairs of point shoes and all that kind of fun stuff. And Heather and I got to talking and she said, I have wine in the back because <laughs> she had some of this. So we broke out some wine and sat there and had a glass of wine and caught up. And then she said, well, I'm not going to drink it again anytime soon. So I said, oh, I'm doing podcast tonight. So <laughs> I'm drinking okay. dancer wine. So anyway. Okay. Well, I'm not drinking tequila because we're low on tequila. So oh, oh. I need to make a, I know, right? Yeah. I need to make a run to the BevMo tomorrow. But yeah, seriously. Yeah, so vodka it is, which is probably good for me to occasionally switch. Switch it up a little bit. Drink tequila that well anyway i digress i'm really into sangria these days i went oh that's not trader, yummy. oh mm, went to trader joe's for the first time in since this whole thing started so 10 weeks 11 weeks 
So I finally went to Trader Joe's and they have, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but they have this huge plastic bottle of sangria. And I had bought some for Lucy ages ago down at college. And she said, oh, mom, it tastes like fruit juice. And I was like, all right, well, I don't have the components to make sangria and I'd been wanting some. So I was like, what the heck? I'll try it. I can always put it with sparkling water. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Really? It was. And then, okay, so multiple bonuses. Wasn't expensive. I didn't have to make a huge amount because, you know, when you make sangria, you can't just make a couple glasses. It was good and it was only 7% alcohol. <laughs> So oh, that's good. it was nice because I felt like having a drink and I could have a drink and then have another drink and not feel loopy afterwards. Yeah. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah. So I've got to fight my way back to Trader Joe's and go get more sangria. I haven't been since early March. It's yeah. very weird. I haven't been to Trader Joe's, but I was, I read an article, an interview with the, the store that I shop at, you know, mm -hmm. um, the store star market that I shop at. And they were saying how alcohol sales are way up in oh, their God, yeah. grocery mm -hmm. store. They have an awesome wine department and in oh, very knowledgeable do. people and a lot of um, craft beers and all of that. And they said alcohol is way, sales are way up. I'm not Costco, surprised. I think, is reporting the same thing. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I was watching a podcast the other day, Flame and Fiber, and she lives in Pennsylvania and they have state stores state liquor store. Oh, yes. You buy wine at the, you can buy wine apparently at the grocery store now and probably beer too. She said wine at the grocery store now. That seemed like a new thing, but she said the state stores have been closed. So. Oh, wow. See, now the last time I was there, you could only buy liquor and I think wine at an ABC. And then to buy beer, you had to go to a package store where you could only buy like a case of beer. You couldn't buy a six pack. That's complicated. If you wanted to buy a six pack, you actually had to go to the bar and buy a six pack. It's considered a dry state. Hmm. Anyway. 2020. So, yeah, yeah. But so I'm right? wearing my new Felix, which I have some input on. <laughs> And that's your, that beautiful yarn, that color. This is gorgeous yarn, so nice and soft. So this is the Three Irish Girls. And what's the colorway? You're going to remember, I bet. Do you remember what the colorway is? Blue Bayou? Oh, yes, of course you do. <laughs> you have such a good memory. I know where that stuff comes from. Oh, of course you do. Yes, Blue Bayou, it's the DK. Yeah, Spring Veil DK, which is 100% superwash merino. It's beautiful. It's really a beautiful yarn, which kind of makes me feel bad about the fact that I'm not in love with the sweater. But this was one of those projects that we've all experienced where we started knitting it, and then far enough along, we're going, oh, I'm really not in love with this. And it's kind of like, I just want to get through it. I just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to get through it. So I think this is going to be one of those like toss on whenever I'm chilly sweater, not like, you know, necessarily wear it to work or it might grow on me, but. Yeah. It, I think sometimes like I hated knitting the, my favorite sweater that I've ever knit, I hated knitting and I Ugh. thought I wasn't going to like it that well. It's the BB sweater, the B-I-B-B-E. It's like, um. Erin Moore Light. It's like a navy blue color and it has like a, it's the one I wore to stitches with no sleeves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's become my favorite sweater. But I, I think sometimes it's really hard to tell when you're in the process of knitting. And you, for me, I have to wear it. And sometimes I think, eh, I'm not going to like this that well. And then I end up liking it better than I thought. And if you hate it, you can always frog it. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, I think it's just going to be like, I don't have one of those big comfy cardigans that I can just throw on, you know? Um, but then the flip side of that is, is it kind of makes me feel sad because the yarn is so yummy that it's like, Ooh, I should have done something to justify this yarn better. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still. So what don't you like about it? Do you think? Well, so the first issue, and you and I talked about this because you were talking about doing Felix, the gauge is really wonky. It's like, it's, 
hang on, let me pull up my pattern so that I can refer to it correctly. So the gauge is not easy to find. Hang on. Something like 14 no. stitches to four inches, or it's a big. It's a big, gauge. yeah, oh, 14 stitches to, to four inches. Yeah. And it talks about, um, shown here in Green Mountain Spinnery Mountain Mohair is what they did it in, Aaron weight. But the Ravelry page, I think, says worsted. Mm. So, as a matter of fact, I'm going to double check that really quickly. So, anyway, so when I started knitting it, can you still see me, Jeanette? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, because I can't see you because I'm going to Ravelry. Um, so, when I... I bought the pattern and it was like, oh, okay, you know, this is going to be a worsted weight. And I started swatching and then I realized it was Aaron weight. And it was like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah, that's a big gauge, even for worsted. Right. So a little frustrating. So that was issue number one. Um, and of course, I'm not finding it on my computer really easily. So we're just going to, oh, wait a minute. Nope. Yep. There it is. So let's see, what does it say on? Yeah, on Ravelry, it says worsted. For that mountain mo mohair? It's, yeah, it says green mountain spinnery mohair with green mountain spinnery weekend wool, and they think it's worsted. But then the gauge does say 14 stitches to 20, or 14 stitches to four inches. So anyway, so I kind of fudged the gauge, which probably I shouldn't have, but it is what it is. So because of me getting the wonky gauge, I did a different size. Um, yeah, what size that's what I did on this too. Yeah, you know, I mean, and that's, that's not an unusual. So I went ahead for the 52 and a half inch thinking I'd get like the 48 inch. Well, my biggest issue is the distance. <laughs> I'm like yeah. that much underarm space. Yeah. That's too and, low for you. Yeah, that was, it's just like, you know, so it, it just, it's really big. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a sweater, a store-bought sweater that fits me kind of like that, and yeah, I never feel good in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you feel sloppy. Right, I mean, the good news is, is this is one of the few sweaters that I could probably button up. Mm -hmm. Like, because a lot of the, the sweaters that I've knit myself that are button-ups, like the, the, the thin gaps like this, and then you feel like you're popping out and it just doesn't, yeah. you know, but I could actually button this one up. Not that I really want to. Um, it is beautiful. It's a beautiful color. I mean, and yeah, the yarn yeah. really is. And it's so the soft. You know perfect. how sensitive I am with yarn, like hundred percent wool being close to my skin. And this one I have no problem with. It's hundred percent wool. It's gorgeous. So anyway, so let me stand up. So I did block it. I haven't sewn on any buttons yet. So this is what it looks like. Let me do this. Okay, so we I've got to stop for ten count of ten. One, two, three, four. That's for Gary. <laughs> so anyway. So um it did grow a bit in the blocking. It grew a little bit in the length. Like look at my sleeves. And yeah. that was the other really weird thing was that the sleeves are really tight. Um, I ended up having to take out my first sleeve and then like reducing the, the decreases. I think I was supposed to decrease like 10 times. And I only decreased like five. So, because otherwise the sleeve was going to be really, really tight all the way down. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I like the detail. I just don't like this. Yeah. I think that, that this, this increase here is not proportional to the width. I could sew it up for you. How do I you mean, do that? It, when, when we can, you know, we could literally pin it exactly how you want it and I could sew it. I've done it to sweaters. 
oh, um, that I've bought, but like I could have, like it, like you could do it. On the sun machine? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, that would be a fun project. You wouldn't even have to cut it. You could just wear it like that and see how you like it. Right. It would be a very simple tapering exactly where you want it tapered. Right. And then, yeah, exactly where. That might be cool. I think that would be the easy fix. It's super simple. Like, it would take no time at all. And then you could wear it like that and then see what you think. And then once you were convinced that's how you want it, we could cut it with leaving like a lot of, you know, sewn right. multiple times. And right, right. I've done it. I have cool. a sweater that lots of people ask me, oh, did you make that? And I didn't, I bought it years ago and it was very big. And I just, all the way down the side. So if you look inside, it doesn't look like a typical seam, obviously. That's brilliant. Well, thank you. That's yeah, it would be super easy to do. Like, okay, it might take fifteen minutes. Right. Okay. So yeah, worth I it. might just take you up on that. And you, you know, know, worst case scenario, you go, eh, I don't like it like this. Yeah, and we take we, it out and I grab it, it. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. As soon okay. as like this COVID thing is done, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How speaking? I mean, not that we need to deviate too far into that because that's not yes. why people chime in but i hope you know all of our listeners are doing okay yes, and absolutely you know it's definitely a stressful time so yeah my knitting is helping definitely helping and oh, knitting, God, yes. knitting and gardening for sure is helping. oh my tomatoes are doing great i have Yay. tomatoes my cucumbers i have like teeny little baby cucumbers on there and green beans they're like you know, climbing up the pole and Mine too. so excited. So excited. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, I'm splurging on water this year. <laughs> How awful is that? <laughs> Cause you guys don't have the water bills out there in Salinas like we do here. They're just awful. No, it's so. I mean it's definitely more manageable. We're way, watering way more, but you know, it's cheaper than therapy. Exactly. So yeah. So Anyway, all right, well, what else you got? Next. Uh, I have a whip that I started not that long ago. It, this is the sweater. It's called Stevie. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, That's nice. Yeah, it's it's worsted weight. I hope that was 10 counts for yeah, Gary, right? our editor. <laughs> So it's almost done. Like I literally will finish it tonight. Um, again, not my typical color. No, not at all. What is that yarn? It's Barocco Remix, which is the yarn it was originally knit in. And so this is how it's gone for me. I've gone, oh, I forgot to say that when I, with this yarn, there was one big section in, of this pink that was, like this is a loosely plied yarn and there was one section that was really tightly plied like a fingering weight in the middle of the skein like it was a mistake hmm. and it would have been right smack here like oh. in the middle of my sweater in the front and it was for a couple of rounds it was quite <laughs> a lot of it mm -hmm. so i had to take that part out and not knit that part which meant that i was running really close to running out and i was worried about that so i put a second order into valley yarn and ordered one more skein of this which i didn't end up needing i ended up with just a tiny bit left mm. so now i have a skein i don't need but oh well you know it was all of three dollars and fifty cents or four bucks american so 550 canadian it was not a big deal um but this is how it goes. Like, I can't just order that skein of yarn. I'm paying shipping. I better order more. So I ordered this Barocco remix. This sweater had been in my favorites for a long time. And so it's just a simple top-down raglan. You start with this here, and then you pick up and do the ribbing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's got this detail on the side. So you increase. Let's see if I can show this. So this oh, is the side. Cute. Yeah. So it automatically flares out a little bit. Huh. 
cute. And the color is not coming up that well. It's called raspberry, but it's huh. a very um, muted raspberry. I would say it has a lot of gray in it. Yeah, I can see it's a, a lot bit of more gray. muted than I had hoped. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's okay. Again, it was an expensive yarn. So mm -hmm. that's, that's um, cute. The back. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, this is one of those that I wasn't sure when I was knitting it, but I think I'm going to like it when I wear it. It seems mm -hmm. really comfortable. I made the sleeves slightly shorter just because I have short arms. So it hits me in the right spot. Um, mm -hmm. So all I have left to do is just a little bit more on this sleeve, which wow. I mean, like another inch and in the ribbing or something. That's great. Yeah, so this so worth its weight, mm -hmm. and um, I don't have very much yarn left. Out of three skeins, I have this much left. Wow. Yeah, so that's one whip. And I've, you know, what was has been weird the last couple of weeks is I was monogamous on this, and now I've been monogamous on that. I don't have any socks on the needles. I don't have a shawl on the needles. The only thing I have going on is what I showed last time, which I haven't really touched, and then these two sweaters, and that's it. No socks on the needles? Socks, isn't that wow. weird? Wow. Well, one does never cease. I know. It's <laughs> weird. I want to knit socks, but then it's like, oh no, if I knit socks, I won't be able to knit my sweater. You know, right, I can right. only knit one thing at a time. Right, Bad. right, right, right. Well, I have not been monogamous. Actually, I was until I finished this, and then... What should I show you next? Well, I'll show you what I'm going to start, what I've been swatching for. Um, let me get to a picture. So I think I talked, I think I showed the yarn for this last time. Um, so it's the Heartwitch top. I don't know if you showed the yarn. Did you have it? I don't think I thought I, don't know. I didn't show the yarn. Maybe I didn't. Maybe so, I showed the pattern, but not the yarn. I don't know. Maybe. So I just I've been looking at this pattern for a really long time, and I finally bought the yarn. And the yarn is the Barocco. Fill in the blank, Jeanette. Modern cotton. <laughs> It's an illness. It's all I <laughs> hey, you know what? It's one of the main reasons why I keep you around, babe. <laughs> I can finish your sentences. You can. It's so great. <laughs> so, yeah. So this, wait. gosh, how like backwards. So, yeah. I hope that was long enough for Gary. Should I go slower like the sloth in the, uh, is that cartoon? Um, <laughs> With the bunny and the fox. Anyway, mommies mm -hmm. all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I started swatching. So this is the the blue. Oh, that blue is gorgeous. Yeah, really. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm like in a phase. So yeah, so I started swatching and it's really nice. It's really drapey. Um, I think I need to get what do I need to get to? Um gauge. 20 stitches. So I've dropped down to a size four um, because I'm knitting pretty loosely. Um, but I got a little bit of a unhappy awakening yesterday or last night when I was looking at um, continuing my swatching. And then I was like, Ooh, when, when can I cast on? And what, let me actually read the whole pattern. Like we all know I am so bad about doing. Me too. Damn it. It's a bottom up. <laughs> Like, oh, right through the heart so anyway but it's fine so it's it's got a little bit of an unusual construction to it um it is knit kind of sort of in one piece but from the bottom up so as long as it's all like one piece because i think that's a reason why i'm shying away from my modern wrapper is because i have to eventually seam it so i haven't done any work on that um, so I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be okay because it's knit in one piece and it's in yeah. the round and all that. So anyway, so I'm hoping to cast that on tonight. Um, so we'll see. 
That um, yarn would would be really good for this sweater. It would uh, you know? Well, that's okay. So that's what you and I were talking about um, last time. And to that end, and to that end, I was thinking I want to do the um, Missoni Accomplished by Spastri Co. I don't I don't remember if I brought this up last time. I don't remember either. I don't. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Oh. Oh, gosh darn it. Yeah, that's lovely. So I was thinking like that, you know, either. What weight is that knit at? What? Uh, this one is knit in a sport. Okay, well, that modern cotton also comes in a DK. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be perfect. It really would be. I mean, you'd have to make very little adjustment. So, so. I think that's going to be my next. After this, that's going to be my next thing. Is it? I've, I've been looking at that Missoni Accomplished for ages. Yeah, you so, have. Um, and, you know, I really have to hand it to Espostrico for putting that on there for free. I mean. All of their patterns, except for one, that's like a benefit. I mean. Yeah, they put a lot of stuff out there for free. It's awesome. Yeah, it's like Church Mouse. Yeah, Church, Church Mouse patterns are mostly paid, right? Are they? I thought they were, I don't know, maybe I'm confusing. They have some oh, free wow. patterns. They but, do, they do. Well, yeah. like the simple ones. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. I, I love that, the fact that they're not like, oh, we're going to charge for everything. Yeah, who needs a pattern for a ribbed hat most times? I yeah. mean, you can find I mean, something free. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, anyway, so no, I, you're right I, about that. And you should tell them where you bought the yarn. Oh, uh, where did I buy? Wooly Thistle? Wool and Company. Wool and Company. <laughs> and we, we went there. When we went to Stitches uh, Midwest, we stopped by that, that store. And oh, oh, my gosh, what a beautiful store. And they had great online service, didn't they? Oh, my gosh. It was here within a week. The people were so nice. They emailed me when it was leaving. I mean, just, and Wool and Company was such a lovely store. I mean, the people were lovely. They were welcoming. They were laid back. I mean, I, my favorite thing was, is when we visited, they were playing on the TV. Um, Top Gun. That one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And they, what I love too, is they have a variety. Their website is incredible too. You can see everything that they have in big pictures and it's very clearly laid out. And then they have um, a, a variety of price points. So yes. it isn't all just high end. There's, you know, Barocco remix, like I am knitting with now. There's the Barocco modern cotton. There's Brooklyn Brown tweed. Up. Yeah. There's, I mean, they're, like, like there's, that's what I'm there's a range. Yes, there's a range. And it was just like no like yarn snobbery going on. People were just really welcome and welcoming. And, and they have the table there that you can sit down and knit at. And so it, it really made me feel good about supporting, you know, another little yarn store and especially people that were just so awesome. So, um, yeah, it, so check it out. Wool and Company. Let's, yeah. I think we should do a culture back there. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that Stitches Midwest is being postponed until Labor Day weekend. Oh, well, at least it's just know. postponed. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know if it'll continue, but. Well, maybe this year, instead of knitting for, what isn't it knitting for knockers? Don't they usually do something for that? Maybe it'll be knitting for COVID and it'll be masks. Yeah, knitted yeah. masks. So, do yes. both. So, anyway, what, do you, what else you got, babe? Uh, I have no other whips except the one that I showed last time. I have a lot. I went on a buying spree, so I confess, but I'll oh, talk about that at the so end. So if too. people don't want to listen, they don't have to listen. Um, this is my no frills sweater that I showed the last time I was binding it off the last time mm. mm -hmm. I, um, we podcasted. And in case you didn't watch the last time I was binding it off, the stitch marker is from Chevy Rell. Um, it's a crystal st stitch marker and is beautiful on this yarn. The yarn is um, rustic fingering from Neighborhood Fiber Company in um, their Sedonia colorway. I bought that at Stitches West to go with, see, here's a theme, like 
it seems like to use some of my stash, I need to buy more yarn. <laughs> <laughs> so this um, is also um, mohair. It's Rowan Kids Silk Haze in the heavenly colorway. And I literally had it in my stash for probably 10 years. I don't know. I can't so, wait to see that in person. Because yeah. And I love the, the fit is exactly how I wanted it. Good. So it's a little slouchy, like a little, like maybe a slouchier, slouchier than this. Mm -hmm. um, I like the, I was worried that the bottom, I don't like a tight ribbing around my belly. Mm -hmm. So I was worried about that, but it's, it fits perfectly. And so all I have to do is the sleeve are the sleeves, but until today, the weather's been kind of we're very warm, like very 80 warm. degrees. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't been inspired to do it, but maybe I'll pick it up again and um, knit the sleeves. So those are my only whips, the one I can finish tonight and this one. Right. So I have lots of dream knitting and purchases. So do Ooh, you want to go? Hear about that. Yep. Okay. My last whip, <clears throat> which um, I have been avoiding, but I finally picked up. And the reason why I was avoiding was because I was getting ready to have a little bit of a, I was playing a little yarn, or I was getting scared that I was playing yarn chicken. So I started the Asani wrap for my sister with the La Bienemy yarn that she bought when she was in France, but just outside of Paris. And I got a little nervous because I made it and I made it so long wait which way is the right side which way is, is she as tall as you she's not she's five seven i think so um i made it really really long and so long that it wasn't gonna do two pattern repeats um so i frogged some of it and then weighed it and figured out how much i need and blah blah blah, blah, blah. well you know when it's wound in a ball, it, it just is, it, you get nervous when that ball starts to get really small. So, and my scale broke. So I was just like, okay, I don't want to work on this anymore. That's how much yarn I had left. So I could have done one, maybe two more repeats, but I'm good with having that much left. And then I started on the next color. So. That's the next color. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, I think she's going to love it. Um, Does she have your coloring? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Um, she likes shocking colors. So the reason why she picked this was because she, the, the one skein that she picked because they told her, just pick the color you like the most. And so she picked this like really bright gold color. Is that even in here really? It's just like an, almost like an acidy yellow, but it's like a warm tone acid yellow. And then they picked all the colors to go around it. So anyway, um, so yeah, so I, I like it. It, you know, I have to say that it's been a little bit more fiddly because what happens is, is you knit these triangles until you get down to like one stitch here and then you pick up a knit along the edge and then you knit till you get down one stitch and then you, so it's, it gets a little fiddly. Um, but that being said, I, I think it'll be okay. I kind of wish I'd knitted on a little bit bigger needle because I think it's a little, oh, I keep going the wrong way. Um, cause I think it might be a little tight. Mm. So sorry, Gary, if I'm moving around too much, but, um, but that being said, I think I'll be able to really block it out a little bit. So we'll see. I mean, it, it's, she's going to just, I think she'll be happy with whatever. Um, so yeah, so it make I feel good that I've been knitting on this again, finally. And it's, it's good. actually been fun. It's like, I picked it up right after I finished knitting this Felix. So, um, yeah. So I, I, my goal is, is to like do a couple repeats every few, every week at least. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I have three more colors after this. So we'll see. So anyway, so that's been my other... It's funny yeah. to see shawls progress, you know, with the addition of new colors. 
Exactly. I mean, when I, it was like the gray was like, and now like some yellow in there. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then you can't wait to get to the next color. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, the nice thing is, is that it's a simple enough repeat that it's not, I don't have to think about it that hard until I have to pick up the stitches and then it's just a few minutes and then move on. So, yeah. So that's, you know, that's my other whip. So. Cool. I've no other other whips that are current um no. not too many long-term ones but i have been on a, a buying spree so if you want to see the buying spree we can go into that but um, start start with the buying spree i'm going to go buy, pick up the yarn i forgot to bring the yarn that i got oh, for mother's day yeah so all right uh, wait. yeah and anybody who wants to tune out at this point and doesn't want to see a buying spree I don't know why I've been on a buying spree because that's very unlike me. I'm usually very conservative, but um, anyhow. So let's see, what did I buy? I bought two skeins of this Dream in Color Smooshy. Oh, pretty. Well, what was interesting, so I bought this on sale from Simply Socks. And what was interesting about it is that I thought it was browner it appeared to be browner on my dirty iPad screen <laughs> than it is in real life. And oh, you know, no. I don't think gray is very becoming. So next to my I face. I like them on you. Do you? Yes. Um, yeah. So people should vote because I was, once I, I had a friend, once I let my hair turn gray, tell me don't ever wear gray. You wear way too much gray and it just washes you out. Okay, you know what? I know that friend and as much as I love her, <laughs> we both know there are times where you cannot listen to her with everything she says. <laughs> so I, um, I, I, I shy away from gray yarn next to my face. So I originally got it to knit like a love note or a rocket tee and I thought I'd put it with mohair, but it's very gray. It's beautiful gray. Beautiful. I think it's fine. It's really gorgeous. I love the tonality of it. Gorgeous. Yeah. I, yeah, I could just say, you know what? Too bad. Well, because didn't you, okay, so What's that yarn that you bought again at Stitches this year that you don't like frogging, but you really liked? You made it. Oh, yeah, it's thing? Taki Ripple and it's didn't blue. You, didn't you get I, it? I bought it in gray last year and I wear it. I wear it, you mean, know, weather permitting. It's super neutral, right? So gray is a great neutral. So I'm not saying anything else after that. <laughs> yeah, all I would have to do. So I thought I had some silk mohair that would match some shibui, but actually it's too dark, I think. So mm -hmm. I just have to get like one skein of a silk mohair, I think, to make that work. So that's that. That's really pretty. Yeah. And then um, in my Valley Yarn purchase, my first purchase from Valley Yarn, and I have to say that I was prepared to wait weeks for a package from Canada. The first one took a week. The second one took less than a week. Really? I was, I was amazed. So um, I had gotten this yarn, and I can't remember if I showed that last time. See, I'm in a pink phase. You are and in a pink phase. This is that grubby pink. Grubby pink. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to tell from here, but it's different than the pink I'm wearing. This is a grayer pink. And mm, this is more yeah. Lavender. One of them so looks a little bit more movie. Yes, it is. So this is Sand Niskarn Duo. Mm -hmm. It's a, a cotton wool blend. And I, I can't remember if it's 50-50. It's a DK weight. Uh, if only I could read Norwegian. Mm. Uh, 55 merino and 45 cotton. And I got it to make this sweater the Anchor Summer Sweater by Petite Knit. Didn't and you do one of those already? I knit the Sunday Sweater, which uh -huh. is fingering weight and slightly different. So this would be DK That's weight, That's but cute. very similar. And she actually knitted out of this exact yarn. So when I saw that they carried it. I was like, oh, I think I'm going to get this too. So that's how that came about. And it wasn't outrageously expensive. So, um, right. That's cute. Yeah. So that's that. You show yours and then I can continue. Um, well, so, okay. So I brought the yarn that is going to go with the 
Asani wrap. I just thought I'd let everybody else. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So these are the other colors. So this is the yellow whoops, that she picked out first. And then they picked the other colors. Um, so this one is kind of um, close to, hang on. La, 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 la. It's kind of more of the yellow than this one has in it. Oops. Right? Oh, that's beautiful. So it's just going to be so pretty. Yeah. So I'm really, it. so it's fun. And you know what? I need to get me more of this Labiana me. Really? I have to say, I, I really, I, I love the, the shawl that I made out of it, out of the stuff that my sister got me. It, it's, it was a little frustrating to frog the gray, the first level of gray, because I was saying that it went too long because it does have a little bit of a halo to it, but you know, it's wearing beautifully and it's so soft. I, I'm really, I, I wasn't in love, love with it at first, but now I, cause my sister, I, you know, world traveling globe trotting sister, um, was, she was like joking and said, oh, I have to go to Paris for 24 hours. Want anything? And I was like, as a matter of fact, <laughs> so that's the only reason cause I'd never had it before. And I, I, I'm curious cause that's fingering. I'd be really curious to see if she has the same makeup because this is, Oh, glasses. I think it's a hundred percent wall. Uh, so this is a hundred percent superwash merino. It's too bad. It doesn't say what, but, and it's hand dyed. I mean, it's just, it's yummy. So beautiful. I'd be curious to see, does she have it like in a DK? or something. Cause I think it would make a really nice sweater. So anyway, um, it does. probably. So I, I need to go. Cause I think they're just, I want to say I've seen more activity from her shop on social media. So I kind of have to actually pay a little bit more attention to it and see if she's opening or, you know, like what's going on and maybe buy some, Ooh, maybe get some. So should I show my other, or do you want to go again? Uh, I don't care. I don't care. Um, okay, let's see. Next, I purchased some sock yarn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? What an unusual thing for you to buy, Jeanette. <laughs> I know. And this was a pre-order, and it came really quickly. I mean, I thought I was going to be waiting a while. It's stuck in the. It I comes start... in this lovely bag. Oh, that's nice. Some lollipop yarn. Fun. And the colorway is, I think it's called the fourth. So oh, it's a speckled that's... stripe and a red stripe and a blue stripe. Pretty darn cute, Jeanette. I got it. Isn't it? I know. When I saw that, I have a thing for red, white, and blue things. And then it comes with this little mini. Oh my gosh. Is perfect red. So it's actually showing up a little more orange. It's a true red. So that was really cool. Um, yeah. So that's one thing. And then I have to say, I think Church Mouse came out with a pattern for socks in their, like one of their more recent emails. And it, they said something about it being like a really simple toe up sock. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, should I try socks again? <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I have all this sock yarn, so I don't know. And then like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll try socks again. We'll see. But go ahead, next. And then um, in my last Valley Yarn order, I might have bought myself a little Mother's Day gift. Um, oh. And I bought the 52 Weeks of Socks book, which I'm sure everyone's seen everywhere. I, uh, I, can't, I can't say that I'm going to knit anything from it immediately. I will eventually. Mm -hmm. But the thing that bothers me about this book is that it's it's by designer so you know i don't know all the designers names so i sort of wish 
they had it sorted by weight, you know, all the fingering weight and all the sport oh. weight and all the, or, you know, cables or, I'd, or easier patterns and harder patterns or something. It's just, it's just. Yeah, my designer is not. Yeah. And so like, let me give you an example. And I saw this at Stitches West and I didn't buy it then. And I thought, oh, I'll buy it later. And then it just ended up being sold out everywhere. And I don't think they're reprinting it. Well, but did they at least have it in the index by, is there an index? Um, let me see. There's a table of contents. Let me see the index. No index there. Certainly there should be, right? Um, well, it would be nice if they at least had it by index, like worsted or no. No. Stripes. It's, it's patterns right in, up until the very end. So let me show you what I mean. Um, so like here's 1 to 13. And then here, here's all the designer names. What does that mean, 1 to 13? Patterns 1 to 13. Well, that means nothing to me. Like, I don't, I can't find a pattern. So, like, here's a pattern by Andrea Mowry, but I have no idea what that pattern is. You know what I mean? So then you like have to. It doesn't to even have a name so that you can. Yeah, I, it's very odd to me. Um, huh. I mean, here is a table of contents, but here it just has. Um, the name of the pattern and the name of the designer. So again, I don't know what a Lucerna pattern name is, uh, right? So, so you yeah. really have to look through the whole book, which I right. mean, it's beautiful, but um, I haven't it's more, of a, it's more of a coffee table book than it yeah. is. Like yeah, kind of. Exactly. So that was, a, that was part of that purchase. And also part of that purchase, I bought a bunch of skeins of this Drops Air. Oh, nice. Again, because I was ordering from this place in Canada, it's a navy blue color. It's showing up a little brighter than it actually is. Mm -hmm. It's and I bought this to make um, the, the Espace Tricot pattern Turtle Dove Two, which they knit in this yarn. Mm -hmm. um, it's alpaca poly polymide, which I guess is poly a fancy word for polyester, and seven percent wool. So that was another purchase. Part of that all. Mother's Day purchase. So yeah, you know, one of these days I'm going to do a turtle dove. I'm just a little bit too yeah. summery right now to want to do it. Yeah, same. But I, I figured since I'm ordering from Canada, you know, I got to have it all. No, um, <laughs> the thing that bothers me about the turtle dove pattern. And if anyone knows of the fix for this, I would love to hear it. So in all the pictures that I've seen, it has a little bit of a wrinkle right here like so oh. say this is the you know the neck and then yeah. there's a little wrinkle and i i don't know what that that's going to drive me nuts yeah but i don't know what the fix is so yeah. you know in sewing i would take some of that out i would say right. it's got too much fabric for my the size of my chest right um but i don't know how to do that in you, like reduce your stitch count and, and increase as you get closer to your bust or something like that. That could be that very well. No. Could be, yeah. But the problem is, is you have to mess with it then. Yeah. And it's, it. it's, yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought about writing to them, but it's a free pattern. I mean, what can I expect? Right. Yeah. Well, what's the difference anyway. between turtle dove? Isn't there like turtle dove one and turtle dove two or something? Yeah. So turtle dove one is a higher, a, a bigger gauge. It's knit in that shibui, uh -huh. not shibui, wool folk luft, which okay. is like chunky weight. Okay. And then um, the turtle dove two is knit in this, which okay. is more affordable. And there's then no about, way. I'd spend isn't there? That. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, there's no way I'd spend the money for the luft. No. No. And then isn't there another one that's similar, Paloma? Yes, there's Paloma. They're all there. I mean, essentially, they're all the Very same different. pattern with little tweaks. Missoni yeah. Accomplished and yeah. Cedar Point, and they're all the same yeah. round neck, like yeah. top down. So, I mean, you probably, I mean, they're all free, so it's no big deal. But, yeah, right, they, right. Probably, they probably are the same basic structure right. with the tweaks for different gauge. Or sure. different, like Paloma has the twisted rib down the sleeve, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I've never done twisted rib. Oh, I, I like it. I like the way it looks. I like a neat, tidy rib. 
and mm -hmm. I find it easier with twisted rib, but you know, there's twisted rib where you knit in the back loop of every st stitch, and then there's twisted rib that you knit in the back loop of just the knits. And that, to me, is much easier, and it gets it gets a very um, nice effect. So, so every time you're doing a knit stitch, so on the on the left side you'd be knitting in the back loop of what on the right side is the purl. Interesting. Okay, because I think I have to do that a little bit in Heartwitch. Yeah, so, you know, if you're doing regular ribbing, you just knit one, purl one, or knit two, purl two. But right. then um, in the twisted, you're going to knit in the back loop of the knits. Right, but then if you're on the wrong side, are you knitting in the back loop of the knits? Um, yeah, I would, I would think, let's see, it's a purl on the other side. I'm not sure if you would just purl regular or if you would purl in the back loop on the knits on the wrong side. I've only done it really in the round. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's beautiful. So that'll be fun to see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else? So this was a belated Mother's Day gift, but I was just really happy that they listened to me. So, you know, I have been eyeballing this yarn since stitches. So excited. So they got me the loop fiber, um, worsted weight in what the heck damned if you do, which is, oh, that's gorgeous. Of, I'm so excited because I've been wanting to do a marled something. So it's the yin yang. Wait, let me get the, whoop so that Gary can, I should probably go more in the center. Here you go, it's, Gary. It's kind of like a taupey color, huh? Actually, it's not, the screen is not doing it justice. It's green and pink. Oh, no way, really? Way. Wow, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that. It's like a khaki green and a mm -hmm. very, 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 very light pink, like a oh, white beautiful. with a pink tinge. So I am just so excited and can't, sorry, you may have smell my yarn. Um, cannot wait. Um, the problem is, is that <clears throat> I had him buy it for me for a uniform cardigan, but now I'm trying to decide if I just want to do a vanilla sweater. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I just, I, I love this. I'm, I've been thinking about this since we were at Stitches. Like, mm -hmm. I walked away very sad I didn't walk home with some of it. It's gorgeous. So, yeah. So, I'm, it's just, you know, I'm going to be very um, uncarved block about it and just going to enjoy looking at it um, and thinking about all the great things it can be before I finally settle on one. So, well, yeah. I've been just knitting what I want to knit. You know, in this yeah. particular stressful time, work is very stressful. You know, uh, I, for my day job, I run a small nonprofit museum. And so, you know, we're closed and have been closed since March 13th. So, you know, not much revenue is coming in the door, but we've continued to keep everyone employed, which is awesome. They're a great group, but all that comes with a lot of stress. And so, and then there's the stress of, you know, go how you social distance and going out to the store is stressful. You know, everyone has some sort of COVID related stress, I believe. Um, so I haven't given myself any pressure on the knitting. Like, no. Oh, I really should knit these sleeves. Nope. I just knit what I want when I want. Like, I got, you know what? And that's why I'm not doing modern, modern wrapper right now. Yeah. I'm just like, you know what? I, you know, I remember when Warren, so for those of you that aren't regular viewers, Warren is retired Navy. Um, but when the kids were little, um, Cecilia was nine months old. He got deployed surprisingly, completely unexpectedly to Iraq. And when I, when he, when that happened, I was knitting a baby sweater and I had to put, like, I, I had to walk away from it just because now I was single mother of three children and one of which was nine months old. And I, like, literally by the time I sat down at night, it was all the leftover energy I had was to pour my glass of wine. And that was it. When he got back, I went 
to go back to knitting and I associated that project with him deploying and I could not, I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. I, I, I think at the time Monarch was accepting returns, you know, as long as it wasn't wound, I think I returned the yarn or something, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't knit it. I couldn't bring myself. So I guess my point is, is that there are, for those knitters out there that associate, you know, like quilts, you know, you remember this fabric based on, you know, oh, that fabric came from this shirt that, you know, I remember playing around at the beach and whatever. We might be, for those of us that are like that with our knitting, it's okay to just frog the project or walk away from the project. It's fine. Walk away. Don't, if you associate it with unhappy memories of COVID, then walk away and find something new and happier to knit. Or, or um, like for me, I just need to knit easy, quick, not, yes. quick gratification kind of. Mm -hmm. Like when COVID, the whole pandemic first started, I had all the yarn and this was like my next project, this no frills. Well, this no frills is so easy. I mean, it's mm -hmm. top down raglan, like it's not right. difficult. And I kept saying, no, I can't do it. No, I can't start it. No, I just can't. No, I just can't. Like I did not have the mental capacity to mm -hmm. even start the simple sweater. Mm -hmm. So I think I just worked on socks or whatever then, or maybe a shawl. I can't remember now, but um, but I don't associate any of these projects with like bad memories. I just know that I don't put any pressure on myself like, oh, I really got to knit this for someone right. or like I really got to knit under socks, Minnesota Viking socks. I do, but like I'm going to knit them when I feel like knitting yeah. them. I'm and not. you know what? And we do so much, you know, like you and I are the kind of people that we do so much for others and as women in general, we do so much for others. It's okay. It's okay to do yeah, this for totally. us. Totally. It's so okay. I just am knitting what I want to knit. So yeah. if it doesn't make sense right now, right. that's okay. It doesn't have to make sense. So yeah, anyway. no, it doesn't. Are you knitting? So, uh, no, I, I mean, that's all I'm knitting, but I have more. Oh, more you more yarn? Yes, not much. Ooh. So I also bought a project bag, which did I need a project bag? No, I, I didn't I need a project, a project bag. bag though. Show me. Um, it's from Fat Squirrel Fiber. Oh my gosh. And That's it's all, gorgeous. Isn't that gorgeous? I, I fell for the fabric. It's all national parks and I loved it. I love it. Who's the artist? Uh, Who's it's um Thomas, what's his name? Yeah, I don't know. It's just fabric. I mean, oh and, my gosh, I love cool it. That, yeah, and it's cool that there are some California and West Coast ones. Like, here's the Pinnacles right here. I don't even know if she knows oh that gosh. I live right by the Pinnacles. You know, That's not that awesome. far. Yeah, so it's super cool. Redwood. Oh um, my gosh, I love it. Yeah. Steve Thomas, I think his name is, the artist. Um, I love it. Oh, I'll have to write her and say, I live right by the pinnacles, but how cool is that? So yeah, it's just got plain lining and, and so yeah, it's this is not even her largest size. Wow. This is sweater size and then she makes an Aaron size. Wow. And I it was a pre order and it I ordered it actually at the be more toward the beginning of COVID and it just came maybe a week or so ago. I knew so it where was did you get it from? Fat Squirrel Fibers, Fat Squirrel okay. Speaks podcast. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, so you're not going to remember this yarn, but I've had this yarn forever. Um, I have two skeins of it. It's Western, no wait, West Yorkshire Spinners Blue Faced Lester in the natural undyed colorway. Okay. Where'd you get it from? I bought it in 2012, according to Ravelry from our local yarn store before when it had a different owner so it was the nice same yarn. manager and she talked to me about this yarn uh -huh. so i don't even know if she remembers but that's funny so i bought two skeins and one of them i skeined up and i started making some mittens you know at that time in my knitting life i just bought yarn that I wanted, but I didn't think much about quantity. I just like, oh, I'm going to buy two skeins. Well, two skeins of Aran weight yarn wasn't really 
you know, it's like, oh, I'll make mittens. So I started mittens and they were too big and I didn't like them. So I frogged it. And then I'm sure you're not going to remember this, Joan, but I, um, one year when we went to stitches, I was knitting this yarn into a shawl and I didn't have that much done. I just had like a little bit and you looked at it and you were like, hmm. And I was like, yeah, mm, yeah, no, you told me the truth. Sorry. You <laughs> and you were like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I was trying to like it. And so yeah. that confirmed that it wasn't good for that shawl pattern. I think it was a, uh, an Alicia Plummer pattern. So anyway, it's, it had, this yarn has memories. So I found that webs had two more skeins of this yarn. So that's what it came like back in the day in 2012 and this big huge hank like and they weren't even wrapped no i, I, mean, I remember were, yeah i remember the uh, the previous owner she'd had like yeah. a whole wall of yarn yep. that just hung yep. like that yeah so i just got this this week from webs and this is what it looks like now wow but they don't have any left so i don't know how long you know i don't know if it's something that they regularly carry it's exactly the same but it'll be interesting. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a slight color difference because, you know, different mm. sheet, right? This yeah. one looks a little more yellow. So I'll yep. just alternate yep. the skeins. And I'm thinking I'm going to do the Felix pullover. Nice. Yeah. Well, mm. good luck. I know. With the Felix cardigan. Yeah. So this is Aaron weight. So we'll see. I, I still think the gauge is going to be an issue. So I'm, yeah. I might have to do the math and figure it out. If not, I'll figure something else out. And then I think that that's almost all that I bought, but I just have one more ridiculous purchase from watching the um, Chevy Rell's podcast. Okay. Somebody wait, wait, before you go there, wait, 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 before you go there. <laughs> so going back to the yarn. Yeah. You know what? It's a hundred percent wool right yeah blue face luster is it is it super wash no okay you know what i'm thinking would be interesting hmm. alternate skeins and then i would consider like tea dyeing it or something yeah that's a good idea you know yeah, or dyeing or dyeing it with dyes i could order dyes yeah. if i wanted to yeah like, if i don't like the off-white the undyed, yeah if it doesn't or, you yeah, know it shows up it's hard to tell, you know, until you knit it up. Sure, like sure. I can say, oh, it's pretty close, but until you knit it, there's no way. I mean, I've, no, yeah, it's true. you know, You're right. You're it's right. hard to tell. So I just figure different sheep. This is old yarn. This is newer, I'm guessing, but yeah. Yeah. So I ordered. Okay, so yeah. So I think I know what you're going to say, show, and I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I was so excited. I can't wait to knit. Although, I mean, crochet, sorry, they're crochet, but they are not simple. So no. I'm like, oh. Oh my God. <laughs> For my sewing room. I yeah. can't wait to knit this Margarita. guy. Margarita! Margarita's friends! My I know, friends. right? Oh, right? And then, let's see, look at the fox. Um. Oh my gosh! So cute. And then these guys. I mean, I think my husband thinks I'm a little nuts, but I. Oh, I loved the rabbit too. The hair. Oh yes, the rabbit's very cute. Yeah, very cute. I would. Only I would do the rabbit in pink. <laughs> yeah. I, I. Okay, and then this is the other one that I just <gasps> thought was hilarious. They're mice. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. I think I'd put those on my wall in my office. Gosh. How big are they? How big do they all come out? Um, the mice, not very big. I mean, no. let's see. But the um, ram is just to The ram, I think, her. is pretty good size. Let's see if it says the size. The ram is 12 and a half inches from the top of the head to the lower edge of the base. Well, that's actually not that's, as that's, big as I... No, that's, that's decent size. Yeah, and the mice are tiny. So I think I'm going to start with like something like the mice. They seem easier. Um, and they're all crochet. They're all crochet and, and you know, uh, yeah. with a pattern, which I've never crocheted with a pattern. So I don't know what I was thinking, but I ordered it on a whim. Um, the mice are two and a half inches. Oh, so, so they're, they're like tiny. Yeah. So 
And do they give you finishing instructions? Like uh -huh. how to like flat, yep. like finish them flat and then hang them? <gasps> yep. Here's so an up close of the, one of the mouths. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh. You gotta see the bear. Cute. Bear looks super real. Is there a lion? There's a lion. Or or any sea life? A jellyfish? No. Or a there is, she has a sea life book, oh, but really? I didn't buy that one. Look at the bear. Oh my gosh, the bear is so cute. Yeah, I, I should actually do the bear for my office, but because we have a few bears in the museum. No, but... for the office you'd need to do a um mountain lion. Yeah, or, or they a butterfly. Have or the deer. <laughs> the deer's cute. The zebra's pretty cool too though. Yes. Yeah. Who's, I mean, that, who's that book by? It's by Vanessa Munsey. It's a it's a British book, so so the UK terminology is different for crochet than it is. Like a, a double crochet in the UK is a single crochet in the US. So it's a little, it's going to be confusing, yeah. but here's a lion. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at him. Oh, I just, they're just hysterical. Yeah, when we can get together again, you have to learn to crochet. I do. Well, I started a little bit with um, Blueprint. That's right. Oh, did you hear that they're going out of business? Really? Yep. They're closing. So and we're they somebody else before they were blueprint craftsy oh that's too bad i know and so i have some classes i have to figure out how to get them i heard yeah. there's a thread on ravelry where you can find out how here's a swan oh my god <laughs> i think it would be kind of cool to make that a duck too that would be but so anyway cute. oh my god know. is there a moose is. is there a moose okay. is there a moose I think so. I think. I think it'd be hard to get the antlers to. Yeah, but you could probably. That's it. And Gary, if you use that for the cover photo, I'll shoot you. Oh my gosh! So I, know. <laughs> uh, I think so I showed cute. probably all of them by now. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so I do too. Cool. I think they're really fun. Yeah. Well, I think you should make a different one for everybody for Christmas. I don't like them that much. <laughs> you mean co-workers? <laughs> no, family. Oh, family. Oh, yeah, family. I'm not sure what my son what would, would do. I was just going to say, what would Andrew be? Uh, what would he like? Let's see. I don't know. Well, what's Catherine? My daughter... What's that? What's Catherine? What would she like? Maybe the hair. I think that she might think it's kind of quirky and cute. I'm not so sure yeah. that he would get into the quirky and cute. He's kind of minimalist when it comes to his decor. Yes, yeah, you know, he lives in a tiny place. That's where, like, maybe so, I like the three mice for him or something. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then I for Gary, suburban, you know, he's happy. Oh, there you go. What would Gary yeah. do? What would you do for Gary? He thinks it's all nutty. I don't to think a, he gets into it. To have a black it. dog? Yeah, but if, if there was a dog, he got this cool, um, we've been bike riding with the dog. He got this cool attachment. It's like a rod that attaches to the frame of his bike. And then it has a little bungee thing on the end that attaches to her harness. And so she runs alongside the bike while he pedals. And the only ones we had seen before attached to the handlebar, but this is to the frame like right underneath the seat so it's very cool she really likes it she gets a lot of exercise but yesterday it was just too hot so you know that she was. gets overheated so um i don't know if they went today because i was at work but i've gone with them a few times and it's kind of fun well there was a there's a good commercial out now where there's a dog and the owners you don't see the owners at all but you see them saying you know come on rex and rex is all excited to go out and it's like Humor. It's like, come on, Rex, let's go for a walk. And Rex is kind of excited. And they're like, come on, Rex, want to go for a walk? And he's hiding under the table. Oh. All these dogs are like, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, her sleeping is definitely different than I think when we were at work right. all the time. But right, um, right. yeah, she's, 
she's getting her running exercise now. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, Coco's a little disappointed that they opened the golf course because that means no more. Yeah. Spaces. So, but yeah. well, I have a little bit of dream knitting. So I have the Missoni accomplished that I've already shown. And then the only other one that I was looking at knitting might have disappeared off my my iPad. Where is it? Oh, I just think this one is so much fun. It's called um, Pullover by Lamana. Oh. Pullover 910. And I just oh. think, huh? Did you say something? I've never, never heard it. It's just cute. I just think it's so cute. Oh, that is cute. That's very it? cute. It just, mm -hmm. it's simple. It's got kind of like a fun texture to it. Mm -hmm. I just thought that that was really, and what do, what do they make it out of? They make it out of, um, it's sport. And here they have it at a Lamana, Lam, yeah, Lamana Como and Lamana Tweet. So I guess they're holding it together holding a double. So anyway, that's, if I get, when I get the heart witch done and then the Missoni accomplished done, then maybe that'll be my next one. Cause I think that would be a nice summer sweater, but otherwise I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to make with my magpie. And yeah. And then I've got some wolf folk in stash that I should figure out what I'm going to do with it. But otherwise, yeah. That's it. Nothing else too much exciting. Yeah, same. I have to finish this, which will be finished tonight for sure. Yeah. And then I'll be able to block it. I was watching a podcast the other day that shall remain unnamed. that said, I don't need to block it because I don't need to stretch it out. I was like, well, that's not the point of blocking. The point of blocking is to like set your stitches and get them like the tension right. all smoothed out. It's not necessarily to block it to a certain size or stretch it right um yeah so that was interesting and then what else did i hear on a podcast i was like no 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 no, no. that's not right hmm. um, i forget oh well it doesn't matter um yeah i don't know if i'm gonna do the felix pullover next i'm sort of on a roll with these bigger needles because i did this is a size eight and I think this I did on a seven. So I'm kind of like, usually I'm used to fingering weight. Yeah. So I'm kind of on a roll. So it's either this one, which doesn't make sense this time of year. However, it, it is cold right now or chilly. It's like, I don't know, in the high 50s or low 60s. Or there's this one. And tell me again what you're going to make with that one. That's the one that I have one that's very similar. It's oh, the, yes. The, with the, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, and I have, you know, of course, this, the yarn that I bought at Stitches. It's not like I don't have multiple projects that I could knit right now, but I just have to see what I feel like. I might yeah. swatch for this tonight. You're going to swatch that? Makes me happy to get, I think so, but I don't know. It makes me happy to get old yarn used up. Yes, I agree. Yes. yes. I Even I had to buy new yarn to make it work, but whatever. Right. right. Yeah. See, and I still have some bright pink vintage, Madeline Tosh vintage that I oh wow from an old sweater, like not complete sweater that I'm like, oh, what am I going to make with that? I think I need to make like a cute little cardigan or something because it's so bright. I think it'd be overwhelming if it was a pullover. Um. Yeah, so a little cardigan would be darling if you have enough. Right. Oh, I've got plenty. But I need to find the right, because that's what I thought this was going to be, was like the cute little cardigan, and it, mm -hmm. it's just not. Um, so that, and then I still have the yarn, the plucky yarn from that shawl. It's the bellow that um, I bought two stitches ago that I frogged that shawl, and it's like got... Uh, the, one of the colors is called apple pie, deep dish, deep dish. Um, you remember it's like a four color sweater or I mean, uh, four color shawl that I made, 
So mm -hmm. anyway, those are my two frog projects that, you know. Oh, I, I remember watch. it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, I have, I mean, I also have this, the yarn that I got at Stitches. I, ha I have multiple. What did you get at Stitches? I'm trying to remember. I got that plucky. That oh, plucky. yes. So <gasps> I got that. I mean, that would be beautiful to knit up. Um, do it. Yeah, I should do that because that's also a good summer weight for yes. this climate. It's the yes. um, plucky lodge worsted. And then what else do I have? What would you I make with that? Well, I wanted to make the humulus, you know, the one with the hops. It's by Isabel Kramer, I think. But I'm not married to it. Like, I have to swatch it in the color work and see if I like it. And if I don't, then I'll just knit it something else out of the pink. Um, and then what else do I have that I've been? Oh, the City Limits by um, Tannis fiber arts you know that's the fade with the right. mohair held double but right to be honest i don't have the brain space for that right now because that takes decision making you yeah know, like oh am i gonna hold this one and this one or this one and this one and yeah i just i i want the sweater but i don't right. have the brain power for it so right. right um it's too many decisions and i get decision fatigue right so right. Um, yeah, so I just want to sit down and knit, like just something simple. So, right. yeah, I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, we'll have new projects next time. So. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well, take care, everyone. Take care of yourselves yes. and your families, and yes, I hope yes, you're yes. all staying st safe and healthy in this strange time. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully, when we see everybody, we we will be more active with other people but not too active <laughs> hopefully we won't be spiking you know all that kind of fun stuff so yeah our county is starting to release to release some restrictions so yeah. starting this weekend i think if they get approval from the state barber shops could be open and some yeah. dining restaurants and that kind of thing so that's actually pretty yeah out yeah. there and yeah. then the so i think we're in Phase 2.5, and the museum will open in phase three. Oh, okay. That's yeah. cool. Who knows how long that will take, but we'll see. Right. All right, yeah. darling. So, all right. Take care. I look you forward too. to, like, getting together because, I, you know what I miss is, like, seeing your projects in person and touching, I know. like, the loop yarn and... I know. Well, what, what phase are we in? <laughs> like, what phase is podcasting what? next to each other in? I don't know. I think we're going to have to stay six feet away for a while. Um, I don't know. But, you know, you can go in retail places like our local yarn store opened up today. Right. So, right. I mean, I, it's kind of confusing. You know, the lack of logic is tough because I, I the last time I went in Costco, it was really crowded. And really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I don't get it. But anyway, enough of that. Anyway, I digress again. Cheers. Hey. Cheers, darling. My glass. I, I oh, now, I didn't use my, mine. My sheep faced glass. Aw, I forgot mine. Sorry. All right. Cheers until next time. All right. Wait, I got to figure out how to stop, <laughs> stop Bye. recording. Bye. See ya. <laughs>